What's up guys, this is Scott J. Marshall, the second of DogDadOfficial.com, and I am the Dog Dad. The Dog Dad. And I wanted to make this video for you today to talk about raw feeding. Now, the Dog Dad channel is going to be heavily focused on raw feeding. There's lots of reasons for that, we'll go into that later in other videos. But this time I just wanted to do a really quick, what is raw feeding? and why do people do it? Because I think that that's really important because that's one of the first things that people ask. So, first of all, I do have a list here in front of me so that I don't forget things to say. So if you see me looking down, I'm not seeing something crazy moving. I'm just making sure I'm not forgetting something. So let's talk about what is raw feeding. Well, there are some people out there that would kind of demonize me for making it so simple. But raw feeding is simply providing a diet to your dog or cat, but we're talking about dogs here and several other animals like ferrets, blah, 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 but dogs here. And you are feeding these animals a raw diet consisting of fresh whole foods that are mostly raw. There are some exceptions that we will go into in later videos like certain fruits and vegetables that are boiled and pureed or coconut oil, etc., etc. But Again, more on that later. So essentially, that's what raw feeding is. We are providing our dogs with a fresh, most of the time homemade, doesn't have to be, but a fresh diet that consists of raw, fresh ingredients. It's not commercially made. Uh, for the most part, there are some that are pre-made, but it's not really falling under the commercial when we talk about it in the raw feeding world. We more think of commercial food as kibble or canned food or something like that. Something that is being mass produced by a giant conglomerate that is not ideal. You'll never hear me demonize somebody for uh, feeding kibble or feeding any other form of commercial food. I don't feel that it's the best, which is why I don't feed it. So let's get into why people feed raw. And I think that we'll start with why I did it. Now, back in, I can't even remember the year. Six years ago, six years ago is when we started, but seven years ago, we decided that we were going to get a German Shepherd. So being the kind of person that I am, I decided that I was gonna learn everything about it. I went and bought German Shepherd books, I started watching German Shepherd videos, and of course I came to the part of, what do I feed him? Well, I joined some Facebook groups, and lo and behold, a woman that is still now a good friend, uh, named Vivian, she said, have you ever thought about raw feeding? And I was like, what is that? So I started again, my personality, I started doing some research. And the whole reason that I was asking people, what do you feed your German Shepherd? What do you feed your German Shepherd? Is I wanted to do the best that I possibly could. And so when I learned more and more about raw feeding, I decided that it was for me. And for me, the main factors were I was taking control of what was going into my dog's diet. Total control. I knew exactly what was in there. No mystery chemicals or treatments or who knows what cooking process or where the food was being sourced from. I knew exactly what was going into my dog, in this case now, dogs. But, so one, taking control, and B, feeling what, or one and B. One and two, being that I felt that it was the best and pro would provide the healthiest life possible for my dog. So, let's go into some of the other reasons that people feed raw. One of the most common things that is talked about is teeth. Now, commercial diets, especially kibble, well, really both of them, um, they end up with lots of tartar buildup because the canine mouth is really not designed to eat that. The canine mouth isn't even really designed to chew. It's designed to grab, and not to be graphic, but grab, tear, rip, and crush the flesh and bones of other animals. They are carnivores, they are predators, that's what canines are, that's what they do. We don't need to be all graphic about it and get all hee. But, <clears throat> so that's one. Uh, teeth. 
The action of crunching through bone and crunching through tougher materials actually removes the plaque from the teeth. Now you're going to eventually at some point, and by the way, my dogs are in here and you can probably hear them. There's Horace laying down just now. But it is, what do you think you're doing, kid? Hey, yeah, come on, bugger. So the process of crunching through the bones Crunching through the tougher meats, it removes the plaque from the teeth. You're still going to have to go through teeth cleanings, but oh well. You're not going to have to do it every six months like some kibble feeders have to. Another really common one is improved coat quality. Uh, they report um, softer coats, smoother coats, uh, sometimes less shedding, not if you have a German Shepherd, and easier to brush, all kinds of things come along with the coat, brighter color, not as dull, etc. One of the biggest, though, is allergies. Um, one of the main ingredients in all commercial pet food, not all, but a large majority of commercial pet food is grains. That can be corn or whatever, most of the time it's corn. But the canine body is really not designed to digest that. That is why oftentimes when a dog that is being fed commercial food, and I'll use kibble as an example, um, you can kind of see the kibble in their leavings. It's because it's not being digested very well. But, anywho. So yeah, allergies. That gets rid of that problem because you're not feeding any of this grain in a raw diet. So allergies, huge, huge one. We'll talk about a whole video about that one at some point. Um, there's also the taking control factor, like I mentioned about me earlier, knowing exactly what's going into your dog. You can control nutrients and minerals and protein and bones and everything else. Uh, along the lines of recalls, this is a really big one. Commercial pet foods have had, especially since the, I believe it was 2007, um, there's been a way too many, not an acceptable level of recalls from pet food manufacturers. From everything from maggots to metal to plastic being found inside of commercial pet food and that's not okay and I don't want to take the risk of that which is a huge reason for me it wasn't my main reasons because I didn't know about that at first but it's a huge one it's freaky it's scary I don't like it that's why I feed raw because I'm taking control of what's going into the diet um, let's see did I forget anything here oh my gosh how did I almost not talk about that one Greater longevity, longer living dogs. There is a current study, and I will directly mention them in another video, we'll go into this study in detail, of a 30 year study that is about 15 years in right now, so they're halfway through, and have a massive set of data that is showing that dogs, more animals, more specifically in this case, are have the likelihood of living twice as long on a fresh diet. Twice as long. How crazy is that? That's like, I have this concept in my head of you being like 12, 13 years old and you get a puppy for Christmas or your birthday or whatever and 20 years down the road instead of that dog dying at 10 or 11 years old like a lot of dogs these days do, if you are a really good owner then they live to, you know, not necessarily a good owner, things happen, but you know, if you're lucky, 14, 15 years old, these dogs are living 20 plus years old. Imagine getting that puppy at 13 and having that same dog at 33 when you're married and having your first or second kid and that dog is meeting your children. That's crazy. That for me is enough of a reason to figure out how to do this whole thing. And it's really not as hard as people make it out to be. So, I don't want this video to go too long because I don't want people to be turned off to watching it because I want people to get this information. So, make sure that you come and find me at my multiple social media feeds, whether that be, you know, Instagram or here on YouTube, which you've obviously already found me, or on Facebook, on Dog Dad, you can come and find me and my community at rawfeeding101-learn-to-rawfeed in Facebook. It's a Facebook group. 
and we will welcome you in there. We don't have any judgment. We don't get on people's butts about doing this or that. We're a peer support community, so come and join us over there. And I want you to take one major thing away from this video. You don't have to be perfect to be an amazing dog owner. You just have to do your best every day and try to improve as you go forward. So thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, subscribe, hit the like button, leave the comments. You've seen a million YouTube videos, you know the spiel. Go ahead and do all those things. Share with a friend. And again, I am Scott J. Marshall II of DogDadOfficial.com, and I am the Dog Dad. Peace.